Okay, we're gonna spend just a couple minutes today talking about the Neodent uh, Helix implant being placed and why, why the heck do we use this tissue measurement gauge, all right? So one thing is for obviously the healing abutment and the other is during the restoration phase when we put a final abutment in and we wanna pick the correct margin on the abutment, okay? So inside your kits, which some doctors aren't even aware, the tissue measurement gauge is down here as well as inside your prosthetic kit that we have the tissue measurement gauge here. You'll notice that it has a bunch of markations or marks on the side of it. What the heck are those? It starts from the bottom up. The bottom of the first bar is a 0.8. The top of the bar is a 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5. So typically there's tissue covering this over and we see how much of the pin is exposed and then we try and give a measurement of where that line is on the buckle when we're doing this because we want to make sure that our laboratories are making this nice restoration where they're moving the margin up away from the platform of the implant but they're keeping it about a millimeter or two below the top of the gingiva okay this is very important uh, because they can't see this in a traditional impression if we're not doing scan bodies or we're not sending x-rays all the laboratory sees is the top of the tissue they can pick that up in their impression. What they can't tell or what they're not sure is how much the implant may or may not be countersunk into the bone. Ideally, we really like this scenario where we're just pushing the bone down a half millimeter, a millimeter maybe. It's okay if it's crestal level, but we still gotta communicate this information. We notice that we've got three completely different um, margins or heights of the margin on the abutment, but everything from this line up looks exactly the same for the restoration. Very important. Um, the other thing, it's real easy to use. We simply take out our tissue measurement gauge and we're putting this down into the implant. I see an implant was placed down on the bone here and it's just screwed in. So it's righty tighty till I feel some resistance. And then I'm looking at the side of this pin and I can see where the top of that bar is. It's a five, five, four, five. So in this case, probably a 3.5 on this implant, a 3.5 height would be ideal for a healing abutment. And in this case, I showed the healing abutment coming right up to the top of the tissue. So during surgery, it helps to get the optimal height and then you check your diameter for your healing abutment. But during the restoration, we obviously wanna see on the buckle and then we wanna just hide the margin below for aesthetics, okay? Um, last thing, it is really helpful if we can share or send that to the laboratory. Because I can see it's difficult in this picture to see the tissue is just above here. I can see a line where the tissue is versus bone, but I can also share those marks on the side of our tissue measurement gauge. And ideally what we want is the laboratory to create a narrow emergence that comes out and we want that margin away from the bone, a millimeter and a half to two millimeters. Another really nice way to demonstrate that is showing you guys here, okay? So the margin on our abutment, that becomes our new gap between this and the crown that is cemented on top. We wanna to keep that margin one and a half millimeters or greater away from the bone. So we don't have that, that bone loss. And then ideally for the restoration itself, I don't even like three, I like one to two millimeters just below the tissue. This is that sweet spot for picking the correct restoration, final restoration for a neodent GM implant and long-term aesthetics. All right, a good, stable, healthy environment. And then what if we've picked something where the implant is placed and we actually pick too short, which sometimes we see laboratories doing? Well, that margin is now hugging up against that bone. So over time, the implant was placed in a great spot. We got great... Um, bone growth and maintenance around the implant, but then we put this in and over time we've seen bone loss. So we've actually seen cases where we put this in and we bring that margin back up away from the bone. And we've actually seen, even seen instances where the bone has come back. So again, hopefully everybody is very comfortable with seeing these guys and we get great results or great restorations from our laboratories. It's excellent when everybody's in communication. Thanks so much.